These cost paths are created using the optimal path as line. The input raster of feature destination data is where you want to navigate from. And you will have to specify a destination field for this particular parameter. For example, here I want to determine the least cost paths to schools from houses where I've calculated the accumulation cost surface and backlink raster before. The schools have various fields and this is what allows me to identify the path once I've run the LCPs. Normally you would like a unique identifier such as the object ID. The distance accumulation raster is the raster you have calculated in a previous step using the distance accumulation tool. The flow direction raster or backlink raster or back direction raster is also from the distance accumulation tool. This allows you to properly create least cost paths across the surface. You will also give your feature a unique name and then determine which path type you would like to choose by single, each cell, or each zone. This is related to your feature destination data, so in this case the schools. If you say each zones, then the data, the input data would have a zonal aspect to it. If it says each cell, then you'll be navigating to multiple points, so all of the schools will be considered. And if you do by single, then only one of the schools will be considered that that has the ultimate least cost path out of all the potential options. So if you do each cell, then each of the schools will have a path connecting it to a, a home in this case, or at least one. By single, only one school will do that, which is the cheapest path overall, and each zone is related to a zonal aspect of the input data. You can also create network paths. paths. The network path is an actual network that you can then subsequently navigate. The output is slightly different to a normal least cost path. By default, it is unchecked. Here you can see the difference between the two. The normal LCPs have a path cost per segment, a destination ID. This is the unique object ID that has been carried over from the schools. So the destination ID 94 is the destination or the object ID in the school's feature layer. And then each of these has an actual meter length as well, because the data are in a planar projection where the unit is meters. The network looks slightly different. You no longer have the destination IDs. However, you have edges. So this is a function of a network that costs along a line or an edge, which also has a length. Here we have 112 entries and the LCPs have 91. So you can see that the school's network actually is a bit more extensive because the network creates non-overlapping paths, whereas an LCP can have overlapping paths.